Welcome to another episode of So with Sir Jude. Today we are going to discuss the continuation of operations on radicals. To be specific, we will be discussing about multiplication and division of radicals. So when we talk about multiplication of radicals, there are two instances. The first instance is same indices and then the second one is different indices. So when we are having uh, radical expressions with the same indices, what are we going to do? We will just need to apply the law of radical to the specific product rule of radicals. So we are given with the nth root of A times the nth root of B is equal to, pwede natin silang pagsamahin since magkaparehas yung indices nila na N as the nth root of A times B. So let us have example number 1. So let us apply this rule. So, multiply square root of 2 times square root of 5. Since ang indices nila ay 2, pwede natin silang pagsamahin sa isang radical symbol at i-multiply yung mga radicands. So, we now have the square root of 2 times 5. 2 times 5, that will be 10. So, we now have the square root of 10. Since 10 is not a perfect square number, so we can now say that the final answer to square root of 2 times square root of 5 is square root of 10. So let us continue. Let us have example number 2. So we are given with multiply 3 square root of 3 times 2 square root of 5. So since mapapansin natin meron tayong mga coefficient sa labas ng radical symbol at yung mga uh, radicands natin. So ang gagawin lang natin dyan will be to multiply kung ano yung mga nasa labas at i-multiply separately kung ano yung mga nasa loob. Okay? So that will be 3 times 2. So those are the coefficients of square root of 3 and square root of 5 respectively. So multiply natin yon, And then since we have both indices 2 for square root of 3 and square root of 5, pwede natin silang pagsamahin sa isang radical symbol. So we now have the square root of 3 times 5. Simplifying this expression further, 3 times 2 is 6. Then square root of 3 times 5 will just simply square root of 15. Since 15 is not a perfect square number, so therefore, eto na yung expression na yun, square root of 15. So 6 times square root of 15 will give us 6 square root of 15, which is now our final answer. So let us have another example, example number 3. There, multiply negative cube root of 3 times 5 cube root of 10. So same process, let us multiply the coefficients negative 2 and 5. Then, since they do have the same indices 3, we can now join them 3 times 10 in one radical symbol. So, 2 times 5 will give us negative 10. Then, 3 times 10 inside the cube root symbol will just be cube root of 30. Since 30 is not a perfect cube, so therefore, we can now finally say that the final answer is negative 10 cube root of 30. Another example, example number 4. Multiply 4 square root of 2 times 6 square root of 6. Same process, we multiply lahat ng coefficients 4 and 6. Since they do have the same indices 2, pag natin silang pagsamayin sa isang radical symbol, square root, so 2 times 6. 4 times 6 is 24. Then, dun sa loob ng square root, 2 times 6, that will be 12. 12 is not in its simplest form, or square root of 12 is not yet in its simplest form. Because we can think of a factor of 12, which is a perfect square aside from 1. Ano yung factor na yun? So that will be 4. So 24 square root of 4 times 3. We all know the square root of 4 because 4 is a perfect square. The square root of 4 is 2. So multiply natin siya doon sa coefficient na 24 sa labas. So 24 times 2 times the square root of 3. Si 3 ay not a perfect square, so therefore it will remain inside the radical symbol. So, 24 times 2 square root of 3 will simply be 48 square root of 3. So, this will now be our final answer. So, may mga pagkakataon na kailangan pa natin isimplify yung radican. Like for example, this one, square root of 12. As long as na makakaisip tayo ng factor ng number na yon na perfect and true. So, let us now proceed with example number 5. We are given with multiply square root of 6 times square root of 3 minus square root of 5. So if you can see, we are going to multiply a monomial by a binomial. So to do that, we need your distributive property. So we need to multiply square root of 6 to each of the term. So square root of 6 times square root of 3 will give us square root of 18. 
Then, square root of 6 times negative square root of 5 will give us negative square root of 30. So, if you can see, square root of 18 is not yet in its simplest form. So, isip tayo ng factors ni 18 na yung isang factor ay a perfect square aside from 1. So, that will be 9 times 2. How about square root of 30? So, it will still be square root of 30 or negative square root of 30 rather. So, next, we extract the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So, therefore, the simplest form of this part of the, the expression is 3 square root of 2. Then, we need to bring down negative square root of 30 since square root of 30 is already in its simplest form. So, therefore, if we are going to multiply this expression, the answer will be 3 square root of 2 minus square root of 30. So, if you can see, nag-simplify ulit tayo because square root of 18 is not yet in its simplest form. So, how about example number 6 there? We are going to multiply a binomial by another binomial. But if you can see, parehas na parehas na may 2 and square root of 3. Ang pinagkaiba lang ay yung mga operation. Yung isa addition, yung isa subtraction. Meron tayong pwedeng gamitin dito na special product known as the sum and difference of two terms. Kapag ka magkaparehas na hados yung mga terms, ang pinagkaiba lang ay yung operation, ang gagawin lang natin is to multiply the first terms. So, 2 times 2, that will be 4. And then, the, the other one, multiply the last terms. Positive square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 will give us negative square root of 9. And we all know the square root of 9 is 3. So, that will become 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 will simply be 1. So, therefore, the final answer will be 1. So, the shortcut for this one is to square the first term, which is 2, minus, so laging minus kapag ka sum and difference of two terms, then square the second term, which is square root of 3. So, 2 squared is 4, then square root of 3 squared will simply be square root of 9, or 3. So, that will be minus 3. So, 4 minus 3 will be 1. So, same lang yung magiging resulta kahit alin sa dalawa yung technique na gamitin natin. So, how about for number 7? There. Pwede tayo gumamit ng special product for this example. Pero, how about kung nakalimutan mo si special product? So, we can use the FOIL method. So, for the FOIL method, we have square root of 13 minus square root of 5 times square root of 13 minus square root of 5. Let us have the first terms. Square root of 13 times square root of 13 will give us square root of 169. Let us now go. So, first, the second one will be the outer FOIL method tayo, no? The outer. Square root of 13 times negative square root of 5 will give us negative square root of 65. So, tapos na tayo sa FO. I na tayo. So, the I stands for the inner terms. So, negative square root of 5 times square root of 13 will give us negative square root of 65. So, the last one, we have the last terms. Negative square root of 5 times negative square root of 5 will give us positive square root of 25. If you can see, square root of 169 can still be simplified. Same with square root of 25. Square root of 65 are in simplest form. So, since parehas na like radicals ito, pwede natin i-combine. So, dito muna tayo. Square root of 169 is 13. Negative square root of 65 minus negative square root of 65, hindi siya 0. The answer will be negative 2 square root of 65. Then, square root of 25 will give us 5. So, that will be plus 5. And if you can see, pwede natin i-combine si 13 and 5. 13 plus 5 will give us 18, which will give us the final answer, 18 minus 2 square root of 65. So, next, how about when we are multiplying radical expressions with different indices? So, let us apply this rule. We have the nth root of a times the nth root of b, so, if you can see, we do have different indices. Ang gagawin lang natin is to multiply the indices. So, n times m. Then, let us get the radicands a times b. Anong gagawin natin? Yung index ni a na radicand will go as the exponent of b. And for this one, the index of the radicand b will go as the exponent of a. So, therefore, the law will be n m truth of a 
raised to m times b raised to n. So, anong ginawa natin? Minultiply yung mga indices, then get the radical. Then, let us interchange the indices and make it as the exponent of a and b. Okay, so let us have the example. Square root of 2 times cube root of 3. So, take note that the square root of 2 has the index of 2, automatic yan. Then, so let us first multiply the indices. So, 2 times 3 will give us 6. Then, let us get the radicands 2 and 3. So, yung 2 dito na index will go as an exponent of 3. There. So, ito namang si 3 will go as exponent of 2. Okay? And then, let us simplify. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2, 8. Then, 3 squared will be 9. So, we now have the 6th root of 8 times 9. 8 times 9 will give us 72. So, we now have the 6th root of 72. And this is already in its simplest form. Okay? So, let us have another example. We have the 4th root of 5 times the cube root of 2. If you can see, they do have different indices. Same with radicand. So, anong gagawin natin? So, multiply first the indices. So, 4 times 3 will give us 12. Then, let us get the radicands. So, yung 4 dito na uh, index ni 5 will go as exponent of 2. And then, yung 3 naman dito na exponent ni 2 will go as exponent of 5. 5 cubed is 125. Then, 2 raised to 4 is 16. So, we now have 125 times 16. Then, let us multiply 125 times 16. That will give us 2,000. So, therefore, the final answer will be the 12th root of 2,000. So, we are now done with multiplication. Let us now go to division of radicals. If in multiplication, we use the, the product rule of radicals, in division of radicals, we will be using the quotient rule of radicals. We have the nth root of A divided by the nth root of B. So that will just be equal to the nth root of A over B. So let us have example number 1. So divide the square root of 150 divided by the square root of 6. Since they do have the same indices, pwede natin silang pagsamahin sa isang radical symbol. So that will become square root of 150 divided by 6. 150 divided by 6, that will give us 25. So, this will give us square root of 25. And we all know that 25 is a perfect square. The square root of 25 will be 5. So, therefore, the final answer will be 5. So, let us have another example. Example number 2. So, let us divide the square root of 3 over 2. So, since kanina sa quotient rule of radicals, magkahiwalay, pinagsama, pwede rin natin silang mula sa pinagsama, mula din sa iisa, pwedeng paghiwalayin. So, that is using the converse. There. So, we have the square root of 3 over square root of 2. If you can remember, kapag ka may radical symbol sa ilalim or sa denominator, it is not yet in its simplest form. So, therefore, let us rationalize this fraction. Pailangan natin magmultiply kay square root of 2 para maging perfect square siya. Kung ano yung imamultiply natin kay square root of 2, will also be multiplied to square root of 3. What is that number? That is square root of 2. So, square root of 2 over square root of 2 will be multiplied to square root of 3 over square root of 2. Bakit? Because if we are going to multiply square root of 2 times square root of 2, that will become square root of 4. And square root of 4 is 2. So, kung mapapansin natin, na-rationalize na siya, na wala na yung radical sa ilalim. So, let us make it one by one. Multiply natin. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 will give us square root of 6. Then, square root of 2 times square root of 2 will give us square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So, therefore, the final answer is square root of 6 over 2. You cannot divide square root of 6 and 2 because yung isa ay nasa loob ng radical symbol, yung isa ay nasa labas. So, therefore, this is our final answer. So, ang tawag sa process ng pag eliminate ng radical symbol sa denominator is rationalization or rationalizing denominator. So, let us have example number 3. So, let us divide 1 over square root of 3 minus square root of 5. So, papaano ang gagawin natin dito? Since ito ay binomial na. 
So we need to multiply both numerator and denominator of the fraction by its conjugate. Anong conjugate na square root of 3 minus square root of 5? So pagkuha ng conjugate will just be uh, get the denominator square root of 3 and then square root of 5 then change the sign of the operation. Since this is subtraction, we will change it to addition. So that will be square root of 3 plus square root of 5 divided by square root of 3 plus square root of 5. So etong dalawa na to, si square root of 3 minus square root of 5 at si square root of 3 plus square root of 5 are conjugates. Okay? So let us now continue. Dito muna tayo sa numerator. So 1 times the square root of 3 using the distributive property will give us square root of 3. Then, 1 times square root of 5 will give us positive square root of 5. So, let us now proceed with the denominators. Since if you can see, they are just sum and difference of two terms, anong gagawin natin? You just need to square the first term, which is square root of 3, then minus, then square the second term, which is square root of 5. Square root of 3 squared is square root of 9. Then, square root of 5 squared is square root of 25. Square root of 9 is 3. And then, square root of 25 is 5. So, that is why we have 3 minus 5. 3 minus 5 will give us negative 2. So, we now have square root of 3 plus square root of 5 all over negative 2. So, pwede natin itong write as negative square root of 3 plus square root of 5 all over and this will now be our final answer. So, kapag ka binomial ang ating given at naka square root, to eliminate or to rationalize the denominator, we need to multiply the fraction by its conjugate, both numerator and denominator. So, let us have another example. So, let us have square root of 3 over square root of 3 minus square root of 2. So, let us now get the conjugate of square root of 3 minus square root of 2. Just get square root of 3 and square root of 2, then change the operation to its uh, reverse, parang opposite. Since this is subtraction, we will change it to addition. So there, multiply it to both numerator and denominator. So let us now multiply the numerator. Square root of 3 times square root of 3, that will give us square root of 9. Then, square root of 3 times square root of 2, that will give us positive square root of 6. Then, let us go to the denominator. Since they are just sum and difference of two terms, just uh, square the first term, which is square root of 3. Then, minus, let us get the second term, square root of 2, then square it. Okay? So, the square root of 9 here in the numerator is 3. So, plus is square root of 6. All over... Square root of 3 squared is square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Minus square root of 2 squared, that will be square root of 4. And square root of 4 is 2. So let us now uh, simplify the denominator. 3 minus 2 will give us 1. So we now have 3 plus square root of 6 all over 1. Or simply 3 plus square root of 6. So, I hope that you've learned something for today about multiplication and division of radicals. If you've learned something for today, please like, share this video to help others, click the notification bell for more video lessons, and if you are new to our channel, please subscribe. So, this is Sir Jude. Good day!